Hi, I'm Jim McCarthy, and I'm here today to talk about Godspeed, the Kurt Cobain graphic, written by myself and Barnaby Legg, and illustrated by Flameboy, published by Omnibus Press. This is the manga-sized edition of Godspeed. It was originally published as a larger format colour book, and um, first time that I'd come into co contact with Omnibus Press and Chris Charlesworth, uh, Omnibus are a large, mu the largest music publisher in the UK. And it was very interesting how it came about was we, we were introduced to Omnibus by an agent. And this guy, I think, had tried to float a Beatles book with a, a Beatles graphic novel, and which was an interesting idea. But um, apparently it was written, the book was scripted by initially by a born-again Christian. So had stuff like John Lennon saying, crikey, and things like that. And, you know, no swearing, which is very un-Beatles-like, particularly very un-John Lennon-like. Anyway, we kind of came in on the crest of that and... Um, had discussions with Chris Charlesworth about um, doing some a new line of books for Omnibus Press, a, a series of graphic novels. It wasn't a series then, but it went on to become. And the Kurt Cobain book came up as being a very, a really solid subject they wanted to do. Barney was very, very interested in Kurt Cobain, was a big Nirvana fan. We also came across a, an artist called Flame Boy, Steve Beaumont, who'd done some how-to draw comic books and that. And he was selected to do the artwork for this project. It was the first one we did. It did really well. I think um, there are some really good examples in the book of uh, Flame Boy's work where he kind of captures some of the energy and some of the dynamism of the uh, stage presence of, of, of Nirvana. I think Barney saw the book very much as a very elliptical and dreamlike dreamscapes. It was a uh, dreamscape it was described as um, and it was written in that sort of style. Kurt had a very tortured childhood along with what we were discussing earlier with Michael Jackson and uh, his imaginary friend Bodder was a constant companion with him when he was younger. Again, the effects of fame on him, it seemed to sour him very, very quickly. I think he was very concerned about not selling out to corporate American, uh, the corporate American music machine. One of the main things I liked about the book um, was, was actually the cover I thought was very, very iconic. The idea of Kurt as a broken angel kneeling in a, in a pool of his own tears with kind of shattered wings was I thought a really kind of excellent piece of artwork by Flame Boy and it really sort of symbolised what the book was about really. It really kind of encapsulated a lot of stuff within, it encapsulated the grunge look immediately. The artwork worked very well for this story. I think Steve's artwork was very dynamic. This particular page here again where there's a very limited, I'm a fan of the limited colour palette on pages. I thought this page here denoting fandom and success on Kurt Cobain where he's floating through the air and loads of hands are tearing at him. I thought that that page works very very well indeed. I think another aspect of the book that's quite unusual um, is the kind of slightly mysterious end that Kurt Cobain had. Or Again thousands of conspiracy theorists all sprang up and said it was this and that. I personally think it was a straight straight ahead suicide. He just couldn't take any more. And it was very, very, very sad, a very sad ending to a very short life. Another person that died at the age of 27. He joined that club, as his mother said, the 27 Club.